You know, Eddie, chatting with Mia Farrow, huh? Yeah. Well, he says, look, uh, Mia, it wouldn't be not, it wouldn't be that difficult to just totally drop out of your music scene if you weren't, you know, didn't need to like further your career. Uh, anyway, what are you doing in India? Well, she tells him, I'm going to Rishikesh to join the Beatles and Donovan to sit at the feet of Maharishi Mahesh Yogi. Mm -hmm. And I'll be leaving soon. For Rishikesh, uh, would you like to come with me? Well, Eddie, uh, not me. Look, if there were a living Buddha standing on the sand dune over there, I wouldn't approach him because uh, what can the Buddha do for me? Nothing. Only I can help myself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mia, you were probably being psychoanalyzed before you came to India <laughs> on your guru trip. And you'll probably be psychoanalyzed after. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When you become disillusioned with that spiritual quest. And, um, yeah. Indian gurus, uh, they are con men. Yeah, they take advantage of starry-eyed Westerners who have most of the money, and uh, they're they're in a, in making a lot of money selling a, a product that costs them nothing. Hinduism selling a product. What's that? Well, hope. Eddie replies. Hope. In a better life. Perhaps in an afterlife. Perhaps a more fancy rebirth of some kind, yeah. Well, in fact, this much Bollywood uh, meeting between the Beatles, Mia Farrow, Donovan, and Maharishi Mahesh Yogi up in uh, Rishikesh, yeah. Unenlightened bust. <laughs> Why? You know, the Beatles didn't like uh, Maharishi uh, sneaking around having sex and, you know, not being upfront about it. And the Maharishi didn't like their uh, dishonoring him by using drugs on his sacred holy ground. <laughs> yeah, after this melodramatic trip, it came down, you know, mid-February 1968. George Harrison muses, there are no gurus but yourself yeah so yeah our, our mantra among hippies in india beware of money gurus like oh, Rishi Mahesh Yogi. when uh i was in mystical ancient rishikesh where the ganges river comes thundering out of the himalayas it's born up there yeah i was way too scruffy and poor to even be admitted into the temple doorway of maharishi Mahesh Yogi. i could see his table Laid out. I mean, I'm hungry. You got luscious fruit, little smorgasbord, honey. What do I do? I have to sleep in a cave beneath the cliff of his ashram in a tattered blade. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, but uh, that lonely night, mm -hmm, I walked down to the Ganges and I noticed a former Buddhist None, Westerner. Uh, look, we're both lonely, horny. Off go the sarongs. We make love with abandon in the sand. Oh, what a relief. And then jump in the uh, Ganges to get the sand off. And <laughs> ah, it's so cold, it's freezing. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, we embrace uh, tingling in the chilly water with our free sexual enlightenment. Oh, doesn't get any better. Fucking a nun. Ah, oh, all right. Eddie's now 44. We're all like 22. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 1968, third trip to Nepal. Eddie travels to Nepal for the third time in his life. Blue Tibetan. Mm-hmm. Smoking Cafe. Tibetan Joe welcomes him. Look, uh, uh, Eddie, uh, you're so mellow. You never fight. Uh, you never get uptight. Uh, I never, you don't complain. I don't call you Mr. Eddie anymore. I call you Mr. Buddha. <laughs> That's when an, an, a weirdo, hippie-friendly 
Ganesh Baba, Hindu, he later lived in San Francisco. He comes on the scene, <laughs> love tippies. And uh, everybody's really excited in our little Kathmandu scene. Yeah, oh, Ganesh Baba? Yeah, he's going he's gonna to hold court at the Matchbox Lodge. Well named. <laughs> uh, yeah, so Eddie comes along too, you know, the hippie rebel and guru skeptic. He comes along and... Well, straight away, Ganesh Baba singles out Eddie. Uh, hey, uh, you, sh you should keep your back straight. Eddie, uh, Look, uh, I'm not really interested in philosophy anymore. Ganesh Baba, well, uh, sardonically. Uh, well, is there anything you're interested in anymore? Uh, Eddie replies, I'll show you. Yeah, he gets off the reed mat onto a chair. Uh, takes out his radio, turns it to a Kathmandu station with Indian ragas, and he sits on the chair, cross-legged, and he waves his uh, upper torso and arms and rise to the music. And, um, wow, look how, look how gracefully he, he moves his body. Uh, Ganesh Baba is, is gushes divinely. Uh, he dances so well. And uh, such a wonderful voice. <laughs> oh, while he dances, uh, heavenly. Because it's much. But look, you're, you don't happen to be eight-finger Eddie that I've been hearing about 